dust in the universe to the waters in the womb I surf. I'm the all in all from the atoms that exist in the sun to the atom that's in Genesis 1. I'm the all in all from the first king that walked this globe to the last black slave they stole. I'm the all in all. Every living thing you see, all of those things exist in me. I'm the all in all from the depths of the sea to Mount Everest. A law in the flesh most benevolent. This physical form born from melanin. When electrical thoughts sparked intelligence, ain't nothing existing I don't exist in. From the clouds in the heavens down to this skin. If you're doing the knowledge, you can follow jewels. In both cases, the basis, water molecules, rain, sleep, snow, hail, storms. I'm the all Come together the same from way that my cells move. You don't see it yet. Hard to fathom still. It's a light to the pyramids, how my atoms build. I existed as DNA when the earth formed And my paternal lineage is from the firstborns Holy Quran, Bible, I'm coded there In a fine mist you'll miss if you don't know the square Yeah, on all four corners they seek the G While trying to speak on me in secrecy I created the earth as mother and daughter Her bones are the rocks, her blood is the water her skin is the crust, her heart is the core. Yeah. I planted the seeds, I parted the shores. Yeah. Emitted my light, she saw the corona. Original man, maker and all. I'm the all in all, from the dust in the universe to the waters in the womb I surf. I'm the all in all, from the atoms that exist in the sun to the atom that's in Genesis 1. I'm the all in all, from the first king that walked this globe to the last black slave they stole. I'm the all in all, every living thing you see, all of those things exist in me, I'm the all in Supreme all. Supreme team, dominant gene, God in the physical, rose from the bowels of hell, pardon my visual, cremators doing their job when they get rid of you, crabs in the bucket, my state of killer nigga too, civil wars in the hood, letting hammers dance, playing with them pieces of steel, attract the ambulance, or a prison bid, now your daughter's sick. Ain't nothing gangster about leaving your seeds fatherless. So I study self and subtracted crime. It takes supreme mathematics to heal a grafted mind. For the two and the three, you need the one. The only way to get to the father is through the son. I met a lot of dudes on that used to shit. They come and go every day. I'm getting used to it. Far as self goes, I'm planted on the square. They on the light to a law. They planted over there. They don't respect the history. Peace, you all wish you all to the streets. Yes, I guess so far. And that's a God of AKA, a God of story. You know, let's do it. On Fezzedin Street in Mattapan, the yellow police tape stretching across the front porch of the modest green and white two-family house marked the residence where the slaying occurred. And a uniformed police officer sat idly in a patrol car, double parked outside with its engine running and emergency lights on as curious neighbors mingled, talking in the cold nearby. That's all they get for free, bro. Taking it to another level. In the beginning, book one. Yes, a novel by Daryl God Whiting, and today his son... Daryl, non-God White, <laughs> is here. Wait, so you not you don't study the uh, the teachings of the five percenters, like your father did? A little bit, but that's not that's not my thing. But I I, I studied a little bit. Now the story, as I understand it, about your dad, he was um, drug kingpin, allegedly. Allegedly, uh, is it alleged he's in jail? <laughs> <laughs> he's already <laughs> locked up. It happened. <laughs> I didn't find anything to be funny about those questions with the brother's young guard. You know, he has a drug king, thank God, portrayed by L.O. Cool J in the movie Hit Too Deep. For others, I'm known by the name that my mom gave me, which is Don Whitey. I'm coming to you from the Federal Correctional Institution School Guild in Minersville, Pennsylvania, and I would like to take a moment before we get off into this interview to personally thank all of you for tuning in to the Life After Prison podcast to hear me out on the beneficial, life-changing thing that I have to say. But because of the time constraints of being allowed only two 10-minute phone calls a day, I won't be doing the 
entire interview myself. I did all behind someone else doing it for me in my written words. But God, God is willing. After being locked up for 32 years, I'll be released in the next month or so on emotional capacity release that I'll be filing in the District Court of Massachusetts before Chief Justice Patty B. Service. I hope you all hear that the guard is now free and I'm doing this part on them but hopefully we will be getting a live audio video from them soon in the generations to come to follow and take the next step for humanity who really want to do something big, uplifting and needed for the community, society, and the world. Mr. Whiting. And Peace, y'all. This is God in them streets. And like always, I got a great story to give here today about my air light as we know him in the movie from In Too Deep where LL Cool J played the role as being God. I had a kind of problem with it when it first came out because once again, I get sentimental anytime, you know, somebody want to present the 5% nation or nation of gods and earth as just being drug dealers, you know, and I kind of knew that LL knew a lot more about us as the 5% nation based upon the fact, you know, that he was from out of Queens, the desert, or the oasis as we called it, and he knew about the teachings of the 5% nation of gods and earth, and how it was really an upliftment, you know, within our era as being young, you know, individuals growing up in poverty and thinking that the only thing that we was able to do was to be criminals or, as you would say, the wretched of the earth. But by us coming into the knowledge of ourselves and understanding who we was and how we was once the original people that controlled and maintained the planet earth through love, peace, and happiness, because we know love, peace, and happiness is a science to everything in life. So, like I said, I will continue this right here with the God presenting to you how he lived it, this lifestyle. Do you feel that the government was making an example out of you? Oh, most definitely. The papers said that the prosecutor had to go to the governor four times, question funding for the investigation, because initially the governor didn't even want to give it to him, but then he eventually gave it to him. I believe he just wanted to use me as a stepping stone to boost his career. Did your conviction boost his career? Oh, indeed so. He became the assistant United States Attorney General put in charge of the Rodney King police brutality. Did you hear that? The guard said that that assistant uh, district attorney with the feds became so high power after incarcerating him and being successful at bringing him down that he was placed in charge of the Rodney King case. So let's hear some more about God's episodes up there in Boston. Picked up in Boston, first talked me into going up there. He had me trying to sell $20 jumps to crack up in Dorchester on Homestead Street, but that didn't work out at all. Me and my man that went up there with me didn't get any customers at all. Then my man who I took up there with me smoked up all the work and took off back to New York while I was in New York reporting to my parole officer. I wasn't going back to New York as no failure to be hounded by the police in my neighborhood. So when my man who was living up in Boston told me about his side chick whose moms was a smoker and who people went to her apartment to get her to cop $60, 16 of cocaine from them from the Dominicans from another area in Boston and to cook it up for them to smoke 
that she might let me work on her apartment. So did you hear that? And that's exactly how we moved back there, you know? And I'm sorry uh, to say that in that lifestyle, you know, a hustling and drug running, that once we left out of the five boroughs of New York because of TNT and started to spread out down south, you know, up north, Connecticut and Boston and all these other places, you know, that came along that mentality that the first thing that we want to do is see what the area is like, what's going on. And mainly, you always want to get official smoker because once you get the official smoker and you treat them right then they're going to bring you all the other customers and from that point on you know you already prepared because we know that when we go in to deal with that that's a life you know of death and destruction so of course like he said you got to be armed you got to be prepared and especially when you're going out of town and individuals don't want you there taking that money from out of their area. Man is to keep everything in line. Nah, I wasn't worried about it. I know the life that I live and accept every possibility of it. So I know not going to be living all paranoid and afraid. And besides, in the pack of animals, it's the most wildest and best fighters that leads the pack. So they basically stayed in line. The wildest and most savage is the one that leads the pack. So if you got knowledge yourself, like I always tell individuals, especially when I'm inside those cages in the belly of the beast or anywhere where it's going down, if I got to be a savage, I'm an intelligent savage. So therefore, I'm going to be the supreme savage. Five to 60,000. The first and sixteenth of each month and the holidays, and making sixty thousand off a of kilo. How much was you paying your workers, and how much was you making? I paid the person who backed up the sixteenth one thousand a kilo. The mules that carried the kilos one thousand a key. The lookouts one thousand a week. The runners who took the money from the customers who went to get the sixteenth for them while they waited in the hallway. 1500 a week. The person whose apartment we worked out of new furniture and $1,000 a week. And a person who held the packs in the apartment, $2,000 a week. My gunners, $2,000 a week, plus bonuses when they had to put in some work. And my lieutenants in apartment, furniture, a car, truck, and $3,000 a week. I made at one time $10,000 off a kilo, and as I hired more workers, it went down to 5000 a kilo. What did you see? He ran that like a Fortune 500 company, and basically there isn't any difference between the legal world and the illegal world because both of them consist of rich. Even if you're in the legal world, if you make a million, the only way that you're going to get to 10 million is that you're willing to take the risk with that million you got. So it's basically the same concept. That's why they showed you that even with Eddie Murphy and trading places. You know, once he was in there and he understood the dynamics of how just natural, you know, common sense and people's reality of the things that they do during certain times of the year. He knew how to be able to tell them how to invest in stock and make the best choices. This is why, you know, we got individuals that came from the block to the boardroom. It started really rolling for me up there. I came up with a plan where I needed some generals to pull it off. As part of my plan, I got a 1.145 capacity nightclub and started a concept promotion company because both business dealt in large sums of cash, then I was going to take a 2.5 million to Colombia to get with Pablo Escobar to pay half up front and the rest on consignment for a shipment of 500 kilos at 3,000 a key and pay 1,000 a key to ride piggyback on one of his shipments to the United States. Kilos were going for 11,000 in Florida, 
14,000 in New York and 18 to 21,000 in other states at the time. And I wanted a contract for 2.500 kilos every two months. After that, in the process of getting the 500, I was going to book a concert tour across the country from coast to coast to have my lieutenants mingle with all the drug boys at the concerts to find what they were paying for their keys and then undercut their suppliers by offering to sell them some for one to two thousand less. Wow, isn't that a genius? He talked about he was going to get up to 2,500 kilos a month. Set up concerts to go around and you know all the dope boys gonna come to the concert, all the fly chicks gonna come to the concert, find out what prices is going down in their area, and then be able to beat their numbers. I mean, when it come to economics, he was really thinking like God. Positive for the communities and society by paying the cost of drug prevention, rehabilitation, drug enforcement, and incarceration, whereby eliminating the cost to the taxpayers and government, and that money could go to education, housing, mental, physical, and elderly health care and infrastructure. That was one hell of a plan. Are you still fighting that battle and still have that plan? No, not within, because now I'm God conscious. The Christ mind and spirit won the battle within me, and now I must win it without. And As you can see, my main two men, you know, one I grew up with out in East New York in Cypress Hill Projects, my comrade, my brother, King Tut, and then also Big D Rock, you know, from another part of Brooklyn, famous area, downtown. And like I said, man, all real individuals, like we always say, real recognize real. So once again, salute to the God making it back out here to the free cipher. Let's continue with his excellent expression of what happened to him while he lived the life of a godfather kingpin hustler really deep now you were charged with murder but the charges were dropped how did that happen well first let's get this straight i didn't have anything to do with the murder and it was dismissed because the judge rules that even if i did order the murder that it was personal and not in furtherance of the continuing criminal enterprise which it had to be according to the law the prosecutor also alleged that you had three teenagers who worked for you shoot a rival drug dealer in the head at a friend's birthday party. And two years earlier, while you were with your best friend, you had someone kill him. Is that true or just speculation on the part of the prosecutor? No, none of that is true. And it's just speculation and hearsay. One of the teenagers charged and one of the murders just recently accepted responsibility for causing the murder and told the parole board why he did it. And that was because someone told him that I was mad at him and his cousin for selling their own cocaine with mine. It was going to kill them. So thinking that I still had a beef with the dude, which I didn't, they killed him thinking that would win favor with me and stop me from killing them. And I didn't order the murder of my best friend. The person who did that took it upon himself to do that and accept the responsibility for it. You see, the born cipher divine wise bodies as we know them out in the street, they don't never go nowhere. And a lot of times during the course of us hustling out there, those of us that were just after the money and not really with the violence, but we know that violence comes with that territory that a lot of times you can have bodies placed on you that, you know, is not yours. Like Glaze said, they gave him a body every week for a whole year just because of his name and his reputation. And sometimes they just wanted to clean those bodies up. Let's continue, y'all. 
God in them streets. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be personalized and always receive the supreme wisdom of the God. And from what I saw, I would say that about 60 to 70 percent of it could be said to be true. To this day, they say some people in Massachusetts are still afraid of you and feel that you shouldn't be.